Welcome to this short video on how to configure the Vibe virtual appliance. My name is Robin Redgrave and I've got Neil Harrison with me today and we'll be going through how to configure it so that you can get started once you've imported the virtual appliance into your virtualized environment. Select the option to start the server. So uh, Robin, uh, what hypervisors do we support here? Obviously VMware that you're showing here, but others as well? We've got uh, the appliances available for Zen and also Hyper-V. So exactly the same virtualized environments that we support with uh, Filer and other uh, virtual appliances. And this appliance is similar to other Novell appliances in that it runs on top of SLES and has same kind of facilities? Yes, so we're actually using the standard appliance architecture here. So if you're familiar with any of the other appliances, in particular Filer appliance, you'll be very familiar with how to configure this. Very good. And then how much memory, because uh, this is probably something people want to configure here, how much memory should uh, this appliance be allocated? Well, by default it ships with four gigabytes of memory and that should be sufficient for what users need for evaluation purposes. First thing we're asked for here is the license agreement. Most people just click on accept, but in this case I'm just going to click on the keyboard language because I'm actually using a UK keyboard and click on accept. We're next asked for two sets of passwords and some NTP information. So we've got two users here that we can configure. There's the root user, which is the administrative user for the machine, and there's the VA admin password, uh, which is the administrator that can administer uh, the, uh, the settings for the appliance. I normally make these passwords the same, but if you wish to split up those roles, you can obviously use separate passwords there. We also get prompted for the NTP servers, which I'll leave at the default here, and then the region. In my case, I'm in Europe, and we'll just select United Kingdom, and then just click Next. We'll now prompt us for our host name, which in this case is going to be vibe.utopia.novell.com. The IP address, which is going to be 172.17.2.40. Obviously, that host name, ideally, you've got in a DNS environment already. You notice that it's um, picked up the gateway and DNS server and network mask from the DHCP. We can specify additional uh, DNS servers if we want, and then we just click Next. So at this point, it's going to go and check those settings. Are the time zone uh, NTP servers correct? And in terms of the keyboard setting there, getting that right, I assume, is important because typing in the password, which is masked, on a keyboard that's configured incorrectly could be problematic later on for you. Indeed, it can be, and I've been there, Neil, on many occasions. So, after it started up, you're prompted with an address to hit. Uh, if you haven't got um, the hostname in DNS, you can just hit it on the IP address, which you can see it's prompting you for there as well. So let's just switch over to a browser. So is this the end of the configuration process that we go through on the appliance itself? Everything else can be done via a browser remotely? So yes, this is the last bit. We're actually on the appliance. We can use a browser uh, for the rest of the information. So let's just type in that address. Remember that it's HTTPS that you're hitting and I was on vibe.utopia.mobile.com and you want to use port 9443 there which is the administrative port. So first of all we get prompted for a certificate. We're using self-minted certificates here by default at startup. You can change that later on if you wish but I'll just uh, bypass that security warning and that will give me the login. So here we log in as a user called VA admin and just use that password that we put in earlier and I'll just click on login 
So some of the things that are important here are the digital certificates. You notice we're using self-minted certificates, but if I was to want to use uh, proper uh, authorised certificates, I can come in here. Most probably the main place would be on the web application certificates. I can just create a new certificate key and issue a CSR, which I can then give them to my CA to get a certificate uh, back from them. Uh, what we also have here is the system services. Here we can see what services are running, but what's useful here is that I do have access to get to the log files if there are any issues so I can get an indication of what's going wrong on the system. We can also uh, download field patches, but in this case we're just going to go into the configuration and it prompts me for just a small deployment. Those of you that are familiar with Philo will know that uh, that gives you another option for a large deployment, which we don't have in the virtual appliance here. First thing that we're asked for here is the database password. This is a password for the MySQL database. And is that uh, database contained within the appliance or is that an external? database? No, it's all self-contained on the appliance, so that's a MySQL database that we've got there. Let me just select the locale as being United Kingdom and then finish. As far as the database is concerned, if you're actually installing the full product, then you have got options there to use MS SQL and Oracle should you wish to. So if you've got an existing database environment, we can plug into that and use that. So you may have high availability uh, capabilities and failover options that we can take advantage of from the Vibe environment here. Including backup and restore as well? As far as the database is concerned there. Yep. This may take um, two or three minutes to complete, so don't be worried if you're uh, left waiting a while. It's not just building a Vibe environment here, it's also actually importing uh, some content for you to get started with so you're not given just a blank environment. Having set that up we've now actually launched Vibe and that's running in the background but we want to do some changes here first. So I always change the network settings because by default we're listening on the Tomcat ports which are 8080 and 8443 but your users tend to have problems remembering putting ports on. So we can redirect, for instance, port 80 to the ports that we want. In this case, I'm forcing it to the secure Tomcat port there. So all they need to do is just type in uh, the address of the server and they'll get redirected. There's some of the other options here that you actually won't be able to change much on uh, because we're running in the appliance. But one thing that you need to change is the reverse proxy. So here, I tend to just change the ports there down to 80 and 443. It's just that these are the ports that are used when you send out mail to users, and if they have those ports blocked on their internal firewall, they're not going to be able to hit your server. We also want to enable our outbound email. You've got an option here to use the local postfix server, if you wish. But I prefer to use an existing mail relay. That way you've already got uh, holes poked through the firewall uh, for that to get access to send mail and so on. Let's just point to my existing server and we've got a uh, username. I've actually got a user called vibe-admin in my uh, environment there so I'll just put in a password that they can use to authenticate. If you're not going to authenticate then you obviously need to enable relaying from this address so that you can send external mail if you're going to be sharing information externally which is one of the great features of Vibe. So we do have an option to just test that connection. There we go. So I'll just say OK on that. We can configure inbound email if we wanted to. And next thing most probably that I would change is the HTML viewing. 
So for instance, if I wanted to be able to view an AutoCAD file, I can just add a .dwg in here, and then I'd have the option to preview that file. And if we wanted to add in more than one file type there, how do I do that? Oh, that's easy enough. If you look up above, you can see the sort of uh, format there. We can just do comma and dot .csv, for instance, if I was going to view those. And that's that. So we can now view those from within the browser environment. So having done all that, I've got the option here to reconfigure the Vibe server. So if I click that, that will reconfigure the server. So if I had, if I went through this process and I had active users on the server, would those users be able to continue working or would they be disconnected? At this point they'd be disconnected uh, because what we're doing behind the scenes is uh, downing the server and making the changes and restarting it. In this instance, it's the first time we've done it, no one's connected to the server at this point. Again, this reconfiguration may take a few minutes, so don't be too concerned if you're left waiting for a while. Okay, so once that's done, we can now launch Vibe. You can just type in the address on uh, the address bar, but it does give you the option to just click and launch Vibe. Again, you may need to wait a couple of minutes for Vibe to come up here, so don't be worried if you don't get a connection. First thing again here, we've got an option to bypass the self-minted certificate. Obviously if you've imported proper certificates by now, you shouldn't get this error. The user here is admin, and the password isn't one that we've entered already, but the default password is admin here. And then we can sign in. So we can see that we've got a Vibe environment that's working. We've got some pre-installed data here that uh, we can use if we want to demonstrate features and so on. And the uh, admin user ID here, uh, can we assign admin rights to other users in here that we're going to import from LDAP, for example? Oh yes, we can do that, no problem. I'll show you that in a moment or two. So if you want to change the password, just click on the top and you've got an option there to change the password to what you want. But in this instance, we're just going to go into the administration console. So here, first of all, we want to bring in some users. Um, you don't actually click the user option here. You can create manually create users if you want. Uh, however, in this instance, we're just going to import users from an LDAP directory. So that screen there is what we would call a local user and how we create a local user. Indeed. Um, and a local user is exactly the same as a user that's been imported from LDAP. There's no change in the features that they have access to. What we want to do is just import some LDAP users. So I select the LDAP option here. On the LDAP servers tab, we want to click Add. On the server information, we want to add our server which is going to be 17.2.86. I always tend to put the port on the end. In this case, we're using an insecure LDAP. If you were using a secure LDAP, you'd need to import the certificates so that we can use those. So on the user DN, I've actually created a user called Vibe LDAP. Uh, you could, of course, use uh, admin here, but generally is considered bad form using admin for this type of task and let's just type in the password and directory type I can have active directory or indeed another LDAP directory um, if you're using active directory the GUID attribute would be object GUID and the account name would uh, attribute would be SAM account name in this case we'll click on the user tab and I want to specify container to import my users from so in this case I'm just going to select the utopia container and say search subtree. So how many users should we typically bring in here for um, an evaluation environment like this? Well, you most probably don't want to bring in all your users. In this case I'm bringing in every user that's in that container but I can put a filter in here to just bring in members of a particular group. 
Most probably for the evaluation, you know, you're looking at only a few tens, most probably up to a maximum of 50 or so. The, the appliance should be able to support more than that if you wanted to, but it's obviously just designed for an evaluation purpose. And we can always add in extra groups and users uh, whenever we like anyway, I guess. Yes, if you wanted to add additional users, you just add them to the group uh, that you've got in your directory. Or indeed, if they're on a separate uh, container, then we can just add in an additional container there. So I can just add in an additional container to point to, should I wish to. And if we want to import some groups, again here, I'll import some groups from that same container. Oh, the filters for uh, filtering out uh, users and so on, you can find in the documentation if you uh, look there. I just say OK to that, go on to user settings. We've got an option here to what do you want to do when users don't exist in the LDAP environment anymore. Do you want to disable them, which it does by default, or you may decide that you just want to delete the account, so you can select that option. In this instance where it says GMT is the time zone, even though I am in GMT, I'm actually in GMT London, which will mean that I keep uh, the right time for when daylight savings kicks in. On the group settings, again, we have an option here for deleting groups if they're not in the directory anymore. And of course, we can set up periodic synchronization. So here I'll enable a schedule for every day that will run. Um, yeah, let's run it from uh, six in the morning or so and every six hours. And finally, we've got an option, are we going to allow local users to authenticate, which we are here. So what I want to do now is obviously sync those users. So I can preview the sync if I wanted to. In this case, I'm pretty confident it will work, so I'll just click on sync all. I do want to save my configuration. So now we should see some users imported and groups imported. So we can see we've got some users coming in there. So let me just scroll down and close that and say OK to that one. So you were asking earlier about um, administrators that you can set up. So we can, if I come in here, just add an administrator to this if I wanted to. So I can say add Robin Redgrave as an administrator. So now I've got rights. I don't have the same full rights as uh, the admin account does, but I've got sufficient rights to manage most of the site. There's some other options that most probably I'd recommend you looking at. We won't go into now, but most of the share settings where you can set up who's allowed to share internally or externally uh, there. Also, you want to have, most probably have a look at site branding. So we can brand this site uh, with your corporate logos and make it look a bit more towards your environment. One thing we want to do here most probably is just check that we can send emails. So admin actually has rights to share even though, though other users may not. So in this instance, I'll just share that workspace and I'll just share that with Robin. So, and let's just give a few rights to that. So now Robin should have uh, an email arrive in his mailbox giving him uh, notification that he's got access and that's been shared with him by admin. The next thing we obviously want to do is just check that it works for our users. So in this instance I'll just log out and I will log in as me. So here, I've now logged in, so our LDAP is working. The authentication against LDAP has worked because that's my e-directory password that I use to authenticate that. So we've now got a working environment available to us. If I want, I can navigate through this. There's some example uh, workspaces. For instance, if I go to this government workspace, I can navigate down through and see an example of uh, how you can make things look. So 
it looks there that we've got a working system. My users can log in and everything's okay. And how do I get more information about uh, documentation and other workspaces that I could possibly use in here as well? So there are a number of places we can get information. The best location is from our documentation website. If you go to www.novell.com forward slash documentation slash vibe4, that will bring up the vibe documentation here. We've got installation guides, administration guides, and the end user guides for the different platforms. Another place that's good to have a look at is the Vibe Resource Library. You've got an option, if you've got admin rights, uh, on your drop-down here for the Vibe Resource Library. If you just click on that, you've got options here to import forms and workflows. You can get additional workspaces to import. Some of these we've got already. Um, for instance, you've got the uh, government workspace that uh, there, but there are some other workspaces that we haven't got imported that you can import if you think are more suitable for your type environment. And don't forget, you can create your own workspaces or indeed forms and workflows and use what we've got here as a starting point. Very good. So thank you, Robin. That was a, a very quick and easy uh, demo of how to set up Vibe and get a get the evaluation up and running.